Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Staying in an unhappy open marriage is like trying to swim with sharks while wearing a meat suit. It's bound to end in a feeding frenzy. Today on our space, love, lies, and Lissa. Wife cheated and wanted open marriage. Ten years later, she regrets it and wants me back, but I moved out. I, 47 male, married to Lissa, 42 female, for 17 years, though we lived as a couple for only about seven years. A decade back, I caught Lissa cheating on me and confessed that she had fallen out of love and wanted an open marriage. We have two kids. The elder was a toddler and the younger was still an infant when this happened. It was devastating for me. She said back-to-back -back pregnancy took a toll on her physical and mental well-being, so she wants to freshen up. Unfortunately, her way of relaxing was to bring different dicks to bed. Divorce was complicated at that point with two little kids and my meager income. I decided to let her get effed while I moved upstairs of our duplex house. We became co-parents of our child. It wasn't as hunky-dory as it sounds. We separated with a lot of bitterness and name-calling. Mostly it was from me, because she cheated. But eventually, we got caught up in the work and life, and I moved on and mellowed down. A few months back, I met Kathy, 35 female, at work. She's my junior at work. We vibed instantly. Bonding with her was the most natural thing to happen to me of late. It was no romantic relationship at the start. We hit off as understanding coworkers, happened to spend time beyond work, still as friends. It was only last month when we made out and I felt something special about her. Since then, she has been crashing at my place quite often, which is concerning my wife. Technically, Lissa is still my wife as we're still married. Lissa has gotten weird these days. Weird as in she is hanging around near me whenever Kathy and I are together. She commands authority like a wife. I had to remind her that we are separated and I get to do anything, just the way she has been doing it for years. It's hard to describe what she has been doing, but let me try. One day, Kathy and I were having dinner at my kitchen space. Lissa shows up and asks, Can I join you guys? It became a super awkward moment for both of us. Kathy and I looked at each other with astonished faces. Lissa sat down with her plate without even waiting for an answer. We had dinner sitting like strangers and smiling uninterested at Lissa's stupid and forced conversation. Our dinner was ruined, but I gave the benefit of the doubt to Lissa that she was just trying to fit in. Then, there was another instance where she acted bossy trying to impose her rights as a wife. Kathy and I were upstairs watching a movie. Lissa barged in and asked me to come with her. I asked, what's the matter? And she was like, your kids need you. The younger one has a science project to complete and you need to help him. I was astonished because we had split the schoolwork for our kids. I get to assist the elder kid and she would do it for the younger one. I said I had already done my part for our elder son and this is on her. She got furious and yelled, Is this kid not yours? Instead of helping him out, you are here lurking around. Such a dud. It led to a full-blown argument between Lissa and me. Kathy got awkward and excused herself and left. After that incident, Kathy told me she won't be hanging out at my place. Though we are meeting at hers, but the thing is, why would I compromise on my life when I have never raised a finger on hers? She has been leading her life the way she wanted, bringing any Tom, Dick, and Harry to the house but I chose to look the other way. But when I have found someone to bond with, Lissa is acting like a witch and deliberately trying to break it. I confronted her last day and she said she wasn't bothered about my closeness with Kathy. She refused to acknowledge that she had been acting around. She says I was overthinking. I said if she continues to put her leg into my space, then I would think about getting divorced. Tears welled up in her eyes and she said she didn't mean to disturb us. She was just anxious about our son's unfinished project and she was busy with her work and that's why she asked for help. I said that wasn't a call for help. It was no less than gaslighting. She then called up Kathy and apologized and asked her to come over. Kathy accepted the apology, but she drew her boundaries and said she prefers meeting me at her place. I'm at a fix now. I want to get rid of Lissa now. I'm afraid that she would ruin my brooding relationship with Kathy. I'm thinking of getting a divorce now. The only reason why I didn't go for divorce back then was because I didn't want my children to choose between their mom and dad. Now I'm thinking whether I should get done with it and prioritize myself over everything else, even my children. Or should I wait a few more years for my children to grow up and then make a move? I'm not sure if Kathy would wait for me until then. Ah, I'm still angry with Lissa and her decision to open the marriage. I'm also angry at myself for agreeing with her and not pushing back enough. Ah, uh, the joys of modern romance. Where not so ex-wives crash romantic dinners and school projects become battlegrounds for marital disputes. Apparently, your wife thinks open marriage means inviting a rotating cast of characters into the bedroom while you're trying to salvage what's left of your dignity upstairs. Ah, OP, 
the eternal conundrum of why we don't cut ties sooner with those who bring chaos into our lives. It's like watching a slow motion disaster unfold, isn't it? Sometimes it's the fear of the unknown or the comfort of familiarity that keeps us stuck in the dysfunctional situations. And let's not forget the hefty price tag that comes with divorce attorneys. They're not exactly handing out free consultations. But hey, hindsight is 2020. Edit 1. Sorry for all the mumbo jumbo and missing information, particularly around Lissa's cheating and our separation dynamics. People are saying it's difficult to give any advice without his clarity. So here's everything. It's going to be long. You can skip this part if you aren't interested in knowing the history. This was like 10 years ago, so I might miss some details here and there. Four months after the birth of our younger son, Lissa started acting up. She didn't let me come close. She said she didn't feel ready for sex. Pregnancy and breastfeeding have made her averse to intimacy. I respect her decision, but she was also drifting apart emotionally. I suggest we seek couple therapy, but she shrugged it off, saying it was just her postpartum thing and would recover eventually. It was almost a year when I lost patience and confronted her that we need to address the elephant in the room. She either goes to therapy with me or tells me the truth what's wrong. She gaslighted the situation that I was being insensitive and all those crap, but I didn't let it slide this time and dug out the truth. I snooped on her phone but didn't find anything concrete. She had deleted most of the chats and emails. I don't remember exactly how I got the cue, but one day she said she was going out shopping with her friends. I followed her car and found her cheating. She was sleeping with a young college goer back then. I barged into the, his house. Okay, not barged, knocked. A shirtless guy answered while Alyssa was on the couch in her lingerie, trying to cover herself. I held that guy by his neck and was almost about to punch him when Lissa intervened and pleaded to leave him. She cried that it was not his fault. He is just one of the guys she's hooking up with. It blew my mind. What the hell? One of the guys? She confessed hooking up with a couple of guys. The guy standing in front of me had no idea what was happening or if she was married with kids. We came back home and I did all sorts of things which any man in my situation would do. No, not hitting. I'm a man of no violence. I called up her parents and revealed her truth in front of everyone. I insisted on a divorce. I even hired a lawyer and discussed the case. But as the situation progressed and the lawyer explained the reality, it shook me. There was no real gain for me except loss. As the children were tiny, they would need their mother. At most, I can get the joint custody which would be again at the mercy of Lissa to let me meet them and dictate the terms. Yeah. Of course I could knock the courtroom door if she doesn't comply with the court order, but how many times would a normal man want to get into this law and order thing? We live in a no-fault state, so no moral policing for her. I still have to pay alimony. Child support is anyway unavoidable. So basically, I take care of all the responsibilities as a dad, but I'm left at Lissa's mercy to spend time with my children. Lissa, on the other hand, was also against divorce. She suggested that instead of divorce, let's open our marriage and we can come back to each other whenever we want. I knew I never wanted her back, but divorce was unaffordable at the time. The only viable option was to separate and live as housemates and co-parent our children. So we did that. Though she chooses to call it open marriage or whatever the crap she wants, I consider this to be a dead plant and we are separated. In the last 10 years, Lissa has had many partners, though she claims nothing serious with any of them. I believe she had at least three partners who were more than just physical. They came home, she went hiking and on vacation with them. It was not easy for me to see her getting knocked up. First her cheating and then her multiple partners banging her in our bedroom. We have a duplex house. I took the guest bedroom upstairs. The stairs leading to it has a passage through the back door. We have bought that house from an Asian couple who constructed this house to have their grown-up son living with them upstairs with privacy. But sadly the son moved out and the couple sold it to us as it was too big for them. The main entrance of the house opens in a living room with a huge closed kitchen with dining space, a master bedroom and a storeroom which we made as our children's room. Upstairs, it was a guest room, the same size as the master bedroom, and the remaining space had a huge library sort of structure for reading and for hosting parties. That space leads to the top of the house where there is a small terrace. Since I was put upstairs, I was able to see most of the things happening down. Sometimes I wished I could shut my eyes, but for my children's sake, I remained vigilant. At the start, I also jumped into dating sprees, but after a couple of months, I felt hollow and meaningless. I stopped it. Instead, I focused on more meaningful stuff. I joined a badminton club and worked on my athletic body. I was a sports enthusiast in college, so I went back to pursuing field games on weekends. I joined a hiking club that organizes solo hikes every two months. It's like you cannot take your friends, spouse, or anyone known. You go alone, and there would be a bunch of other people who are also alone. So basically you hike with strangers. It was dang fun. I did that for two years continuously, and now I do it only twice a year. 
I've had hookups here and there in these last 10 years, but no emotional affairs and no long-term partners. Didn't feel that connection with anyone else. With Kathy, things are different. I feel unhappy around her. She's the woman I feel I can give love another chance. But the devil of my life has come hunting me down there as well. The current situation remains the same. Kathy refuses to come to my place. I'm worried that she would go distant from me and I don't want to lose her. The situation is practically choosing between Kathy and my children and I'm struggling to make a choice. Ah, uh, the saga continues, doesn't it? Thanks for filling in the details. It sounds like you've been through quite the roller coaster ride with Lissa, and navigating through the aftermath of her choices hasn't been a walk in the park either. It's understandable why a divorce might have seemed like a daunting option given the complexities involved, especially with young children in the picture. Your decision to separate and co-parent was probably the most practical one at the time, despite Lissa's attempts to redefine it as an open marriage. And it seems like you've been doing your best to move forward, focusing on your own well-being and interests. Ultimately, it's important to prioritize your own happiness and well-being, but of course, that's easier said than done when there are kids involved. But I don't know anyone who wants to be miserable for the rest of their lives. You deserve to find happiness and fulfillment in your relationships, whatever form that may take. But you'd think at this point too, your children are aware of what their mother is doing and it would be just as awkward and painful to watch for them as it is for you. Update 1 Hello all, thanks for all the suggestions and comments. I appreciate all of it, good and bad, both. I sought therapy which helped a lot in understanding my focal point and what I wanted at this point in my life. As you guys said, the children are entering their teens, so it's just a matter of a few years before they would walk out to lead their individual lives and it doesn't make sense to miss my chance of being happy with Kathy. I had a transparent discussion with Kathy. I told her about my feelings. I told her I want to be with her and if she feels likewise, I can work this out. She said she feels likewise but is reluctant because of my family dynamics. She just doesn't feel comfortable being around my legal wife. She's fine with the children around me. I said I can work this out. I'm going to move out. The children can decide where they want to stay. They are mature enough to make this decision. They can also choose to shuffle between moms and dads. Kathy voted in for it. My therapist suggested children counseling where they could be made aware of our marital status in an age-appropriate manner. I told Lissa about the counseling thing and she flipped out. She said I was being selfish and nuts for dragging my children into this mess that I'm messing with their life by getting serious with Kathy and I should prioritize my family over my own selfish desires. I lost my crap at this. Really, Lissa? Are you the one giving these preachings of family and moral BS? What happened to your ethics when you were getting knocked up by different dicks while your children were still breastfeeding and rolling in their cribs? I asked her to back off and took the kids to the counselor. It was helpful. The children have received it well. They kind of appreciated that we were sticking along for so long for their sake. They also agreed that I have the right to be happy for the rest of my life. I told Lissa I would be filing for divorce. She acted shocked and started sobbing. She said, I thought we decided never to get divorced and be with each other throughout. Now when you found this woman, you were leaving your family to be with her? I have also met so many men who wanted to marry me, but I never traded off my married life for them. I said, stop trying to guilt trip me. This isn't helping. Cut the crap and sign the papers. I'll be paying for the children's education until college. You can keep the house and the car. That would be your alimony. I'll be moving out. I'm choosing my happiness over money because now I can afford it. Back then I couldn't. She cried and tried all means to talk me out of the divorce thing. She said I can move out and live with Kathy and remain married. I said I love Kathy and don't want her to be called my mistress. I know no one would call her out that way, but Lissa would. She can go any length to humiliate others. The paper should be in any day. I'm moving in with Kathy next month. I'm waiting for my children's annual exams to be over. I would be taking them for a trip and then I would move out. I would be relieved when all these things get settled for all. Lissa's reaction to your decision to pursue your own happiness is deeply unfair and troubling. Her attempt to guilt trip you by questioning your commitment to family while conveniently ignoring her own actions is not only manipulative, but also hypocritical. It's clear that you've put a lot of thought and consideration into your choices, especially regarding your children's well-being and happiness. You sought therapy and transparent discussions with Kathy, and even involved your children in counseling to ensure they understand the situation in an age-appropriate manner. No one should be made to feel guilty for choosing to prioritize their own emotional fulfillment and well-being, especially in a situation where staying in the marriage is no longer tenable. Lisa's gotta nut up. Update 2 I tell you, this woman is a real witch. As I mentioned in my last update, I was off for a vacation with kids. This woman used the opportunity to pull off her evil plan. Lissa sobs her way to Kathy and asks her to back off. She told her that she's tearing apart her family and that our children would be suffering because of her. 
Lissa tried to guilt trip Kathy, but when Kathy didn't budge, Lissa said that I wasn't serious about her and Kathy was just a fling for me. Lissa is a shrewd and cruel woman. She knows very well how to play the hurt cards. She knew I was in a low network zone with kids, so Kathy wouldn't contact me. And she didn't. Had she been any other woman, she would go crazy at this fling statement, but Kathy remained composed and waited for my return. She had the hotel number I was put up in, but she didn't disturb me. That's what I love about her. She's a secure woman despite my complex situation. When I returned home and got to know about Lissa's malicious move, I stormed to her door and gave her the yellings of her life. Should have done this earlier to get the crap out of her head. Her entitlement behavior has crossed all limits and now no one is going to bear that. I have moved out of the house. My children have also decided to stay with me, but we don't have a spare room for them. So I'm looking out for a bigger house to accommodate my children. Until then, they are at their mom's. Lissa threw all kinds of tantrums when I was moving out. From guilt tripping to yellings, from gaslighting to sobbing and pleading, asking for another chance to be given to our relationship. I said our relationship was over 10 years ago. We were just housemates and co-parents. The reality is I have moved on from loving her. She's nothing to me. I love Kathy and want to spend the rest of my life with her. When the divorce papers reached Alyssa, she tore it away. My lawyer had to send her a notice threatening to sue her for damaging a legal document. Only then did she mellow down and agree to sign it. The divorce proceedings are on. I haven't checked upon my soon-to-be ex since then. I went to pick up my children twice, but didn't enter the house. And yeah, a lot of you asked about my children's age. They are 11 and 13 now. Quite mature to understand the divorce and separation. Update 3 So glad to announce the soon-to-be ex is now my official ex-wife. The highlight of this update is, the divorce is settled and my children have moved in with me, but they would be visiting their moms every two weeks or whenever they want to. The last month had been hectic, renting a house and moving stuff, we had not told Lissa about children moving in with me until I rented a new house. The children and I all were aware that she would break several hells on us, so best to avoid or delay it as much as possible. The children said that they would keep their bags packed and sneak out with me when Lissa wouldn't be around, but I decided to go in a legal way. Don't want to get into another trouble with that woman. As for our divorce clause, we have to give a three-day notice to each other if we want to take our children for more than two days. So I went home and told her that the children wanted to move in with me and I would be coming in three days to pick them up. As expected, she freaked out. Good for her that she didn't go violent, breaking things and all. It would have played better for us. But no, she chose the emotional way, hugged the kids and cried, saying sorry for everything and asking them not to abandon her. She tried her best to emotionally manipulate them to stay with her and she was even successful in doing that with the younger one. He said that he wants to stay with mama. Kathy had told me that situations like this could brew and I should be prepared for their last minute back out. So when he called, I said, cool, dad loves you no matter what, but the elder son still stood solid to his decision to move out. I said, sure, I'll pick you up. I don't know what happened in between, but when I went to pick him up, both boys were ready with their stuff. I hugged them both and shipped them away. I didn't ask them what happened here. It's already so traumatic for them. I don't want to scribble and torture them. Kathy and I are trying to make them comfortable at our house. We are involving them in setting up their room. Everything goes in there as per their taste. When the children were leaving the house, I was expecting Lisa to give her last try, but she had given up by then. She just sat there crying and sobbing. She hugged the boys tightly, told them how sorry she was about her behavior, and said she loves them and they were free to come back to mama's whenever they wanted. She asked me if I had a minute for a coffee. Her ask sounded naive and genuine, so I obliged. Her tone was remorseful. She apologized and this time it didn't sound fake. She said, I was delusional all this while, thinking you would never leave me. When Kathy came into your life, I didn't consider her to be a threat. I thought her to be one of those flings that would fizzle out in a month. I guess I took you for granted because of the security you provided to me and the children despite everything I did to you. I didn't realize I was mean and narcissistic, and when I did, it's too late I guess. I just smiled and suppressed my emotions from flowing out. I stood up to leave. She came forward to hug me. I hugged her back. That was our first hug in 10 years. I can't contemplate how I felt about it, nor can I express how I feel now, after the last talk with her. I'm neither happy nor sad, just numb. That's what it is. The last six to seven months have been quite a life-changing phase for me. I guess I would take time to process everything, but thanks for all the support. You guys have been the best. I might update the thread if something progresses from here. Lissa's sudden realization of her actions and her attempts at apology might seem like a step towards redemption, but it's crucial to recognize that her epiphany comes far too late in the game. After years of manipulation, emotional turmoil, and attempts to undermine your happiness, her apologies ring hollow in the face of the damage she's caused. It's understandable that you feel numb and conflicted after your last interaction with her, 
but it's important to remember that you've taken the necessary steps to move forward and create a brighter future for yourself and your children. Thank you for sharing your journey with us, and I wish you all the best as you continue to navigate this new chapter in your life, OP. Remember, you deserve happiness and fulfillment, and you've taken the courageous steps to pursue it. What do you make of all this? What would you have done? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.